The lake house nestled deep within a dense forest. The lake house stood as a silent sentinel, shrouded in an aura of mystery. Its time-worn exterior whispered of tales long forgotten, while the tranquil lake it overlooked held secrets that the waters dared not reveal. The local legends spoke of a haunting presence that clung to the house, a presence that had driven away previous owners and cast an eerie pall over the area. The Murphy family had heard the whispers, the cautionary tales spun around campfires and shared in hushed tones at the local diner. Yet, they were undeterred. Thomas, Sarah, and their two children, Emily and Jacob, saw the lake house as an idyllic retreat from the chaos of the city. Little did they know that their dreams of peaceful serenity would soon unravel in the face of the house's chilling reality. As the Murphys settled into their new home, the atmosphere seemed to shift. The air grew colder, and shadows danced in the corners of their vision. Strange sounds echoed through the halls at night. Whispers, creaking floorboards, and the faint splash of water. Emily complained of hearing soft sobbing near the lake, but when Thomas investigated, he found nothing amiss. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon and the lake shimmered with an eerie glow, Jacob's stuffed bear disappeared. Tears streamed down his face as he explained to his parents that the bear had whispered to him in the dark, urging him to come closer to the water's edge. The family searched the house from top to bottom, but the bear was nowhere to be found. Days turned into weeks, and the unsettling occurrences escalated. Sarah often woke up with vivid nightmares of drowning in the lake, her screams echoing through the house as she gasped for breath. Thomas, skeptical by nature, brushed off the family's growing unease, chalking it up to the unfamiliar surroundings. Yet even he couldn't ignore the undeniable sense of being watched that seemed to cling to the house like a malevolent specter. One stormy night, a relentless downpour lashed against the windows. The wind howled like a mournful wail, and the lake churned with an anger that matched the tempest outside. The Murphys huddled together in the living room, the flickering candles casting eerie shadows on the walls. Suddenly, the room grew bitterly cold and their breath misted in the air. From the corner of her eye, Sarah caught a glimpse of movement outside the window. A figure, clad in a flowing white dress, standing at the water's edge. She blinked, and the figure vanished. She dismissed it as a trick of the light, but the dread that had settled in her chest refused to abate. That night, as the family lay in fitful sleep, the house seemed to come alive. The floorboards groaned, as if bearing the weight of unseen footsteps. Faint whispers drifted through the corridors, and the temperature plummeted to bone-chilling levels. Emily awoke to the sensation of icy fingers brushing against her cheek, and she stifled a scream as she glimpsed the figure of a woman standing at the foot of her bed. The woman's eyes were hollow, void of life, and her spectral form seemed to flicker like a dying flame. Emily's voice caught in her throat, and she could only watch in terror as the figure raised a finger to her lips, urging silence. And then, with a mournful gaze, the apparition turned and glided towards the window, disappearing into the night. Morning came, casting a feeble light on a family forever changed. The Murphys gathered in the living room, their eyes heavy with exhaustion and fear. Sarah's resolve crumbled as she recounted Emily's encounter, her voice trembling as she described the spectral figure and the touch as cold as death. Thomas, finally stripped of his skepticism, admitted to hearing the whispers that seemed to beckon him to the lake. With heavy hearts, they faced the truth, the lake house held a darkness that defied explanation. As the family packed their belongings, a sense of urgency drove them, as if the very walls were closing in around them. The lake house, once a haven of promise, had become a place of haunting nightmares. As they drove away from the house, their eyes lingered on the lake, its calm surface now a mirror to the secrets it held. The lake house remained behind, a silent sentinel once more, waiting for the next unsuspecting souls to cross its threshold. And as the Murphys left the eerie tranquility of the forest behind, the lake's ripples seemed to hold a mournful echo of their departure, a chilling reminder that some secrets were better left buried in the depths. The family's experiences would forever serve as a haunting testament to the lake house's dark past. The whispers, the figures, the unexplainable phenomena they were all woven into the fabric of the house, etching their terror into its walls. 
The lake, once a source of tranquility, had become a mirror reflecting the chilling reality that the Murphys had faced. The lake house stood as a reminder that some places held memories too sinister to be erased. Its presence lingered in the memories of the town's residents, a cautionary tale passed down through generations. The Murphys had escaped its clutches, but the house's secrets remained hidden beneath its time-worn exterior, waiting for the next unsuspecting occupants to unlock its chilling mysteries. The moon hung low in the night sky, casting a silvery glow upon the still waters of the lake. Tall, gnarled trees lined the shore, their branches like skeletal fingers reaching towards the inky abyss. The air was thick with an unsettling stillness, broken only by the distant chirping of crickets. It was a night ripe with an eerie anticipation, as if the very fabric of the world held its breath. Amelia had always been drawn to the lake, finding solace in its tranquil beauty during the day. The way the sunlight danced on its surface and the gentle ripples created a mesmerizing symphony that soothed her soul. But tonight, as she stood by the water's edge, an unshakable sense of unease gripped her heart. The once inviting water now appeared sinister, the moon's reflection twisted into something foreboding. A shiver ran down her spine, and she dismissed it as a product of her overactive imagination. She took a deep breath, trying to steady herself, and then stepped into the water. The initial shock of its coldness sent a jolt through her body, but she pressed on. The lake was calm, a mirror reflecting the sky above, and for a moment, Amelia felt a flicker of reassurance. As she waded deeper, her senses heightened. Every ripple, every rustle of leaves in the breeze seemed to echo with an otherworldly resonance. A haunting chill settled in her bones, making her movements sluggish, almost dreamlike. The water crept up her body, caressing her skin with an icy touch that seemed to seep into her very soul. Amelia's heart quickened, a growing sense of dread gnawing at her. She tried to convince herself that it was just her imagination running wild, that the lake held no secrets. But then she felt it, a soft, almost imperceptible tug at her ankles. Panic surged through her veins as she tried to step back, but her feet seemed rooted in place, trapped by an unseen force. With a gasp, she looked down, and her breath caught in her throat. Dark tendrils, like serpentine fingers, wrapped around her ankles, pulling her downward into the depths. She struggled, her heart pounding in her chest as the water rose higher, embracing her, consuming her. Desperation clawed at her mind, and she fought with every ounce of strength she had left. But the water was unrelenting, its cold embrace tightening around her like a vice. Her cries for help were swallowed by the abyss, lost in the vast expanse of the lake. Panic gave way to a surreal calm as the water rose to her chin, then her nose, and finally her lips. In those last moments, as her vision blurred and darkness closed in, she could almost swear she saw faces in the water, twisted, anguished faces that seemed to be reaching out to her. And then, with a sudden rush, the water surged into her mouth, choking off her breath and silencing her screams. Everything became a swirling maelstrom of darkness and suffocating pressure. Her limbs grew heavy, her struggles weakened, and an overwhelming sense of surrender washed over her. She closed her eyes, surrendering to the inevitable. As Amelia's consciousness faded, her mind became a fragmented mosaic of memories. She saw the faces of loved ones, heard their voices, felt their touch, but they were distant, fading echoes in the growing void. The water enveloped her completely now, wrapping around her like a shroud. It was an eerie embrace, both terrifying and strangely serene. Time lost all meaning as she drifted, suspended between the worlds of the living and the unknown. The lake became her grave and her sanctuary, a place where the boundary between life and death blurred into insignificance. And though her body would never be found, the lake whispered her story to those who dared approach its shores on moonlit nights, a cautionary tale of a darkness that lurked beneath its serene surface. Beneath the tranquil surface of Willowbrook Lake, a sinister secret slumbered. The small town of Willowbrook had always revered its picturesque lake, a place of serene beauty where families picnicked by the shore and children splashed in the shallows. 
but as the sun dipped below the horizon and the moon cast its silvery glow, an ancient terror stirred in the depths, hungering for darkness and retribution. For generations, tales of a lake monster had been whispered around campfires, dismissed by most as mere legends. But Jonah Tanner, a weathered fisherman who had spent his life on the water, knew better. He had seen the signs, ripples in the water that defied explanation, unexplained disappearances of wildlife, and the inexplicable dread that settled in the pit of his stomach whenever he cast his gaze upon the lake at night. It was a warm summer evening when Jonah Tanner embarked on his fateful expedition. The lake's surface was a sheet of glass, reflecting the stars with deceptive calmness. Armed with his trusty boat and fishing gear, he pushed off from the shore, the gentle lapping of the water soothing his nerves. But beneath his veneer of calm, a gnawing unease grew stronger with every stroke of the oars. As the boat ventured deeper into the lake, a chill crept into the air. Jonah felt as though he was being watched, those invisible eyes boring into his very soul. He cast his fishing line, the bait disappearing into the depths. Minutes turned into hours, and the oppressive silence was broken only by the occasional rustling of leaves on the shore. Just as Jonah began to consider giving up and heading back, the line tugged violently. His heart raced as he struggled to reel in whatever had taken the bait. The boat rocked with the force of his adversary, and his pulse quickened as a massive shadow emerged from the depths. A creature of nightmares, its scales glistening in the moonlight. The monster was unlike anything Jonah had ever seen. Its eyes were cold, unfeeling orbs that seemed to pierce through him. Its maw was lined with jagged teeth, evidence of its relentless predation. The lake monster thrashed, its enormous body sending waves crashing against the boat. Jonah's heart pounded as he grappled with the fishing rod, his strength waning against the creature's fury. With a final surge of strength, Jonah managed to free the line from the monster's grip. The creature sank back into the depths, disappearing in a cascade of water. The boat rocked violently, and Jonah struggled to maintain his balance. As the waves subsided and the lake returned to its deceptive calm, he realized that he had narrowly escaped the clutches of a true aquatic nightmare. Breathing heavily, Jonah turned the boat back towards the shore. The encounter had shaken him to his core, confirming the tales that he had once dismissed as mere superstition. He knew he had to warn the town, to share his harrowing experience, and expose the truth lurking beneath the serene surface of Willowbrook Lake. When Jonah returned to Willowbrook, his tale was met with skepticism and disbelief. But as he recounted the details of his encounter and showed the fishing line, frayed and worn from the struggle, a solemn hush fell over the gathering. The town's laughter turned into murmurs of uncertainty, and even the most hardened skeptics couldn't ignore the haunted look in Jonah's eyes. Days turned into weeks, and the unease in Willowbrook deepened. The lake that had once been a source of joy now held a lurking fear, its depths concealing a creature of ancient malevolence. The town's fishermen spoke in hushed tones, their tales of strange encounters and unsettling sights becoming more frequent. Willowbrook's idyllic charm had been shattered, replaced by a tension that hung in the air like a storm waiting to break. As the nights grew longer, the lake's surface became a mirror for the darkness that churned beneath. Residents reported strange sounds echoing across the water, a mournful cry that seemed to emerge from the very heart of the lake. The town's children no longer played by the shore, and families avoided the water after sunset. One moonless night, as the town slept in uneasy slumber, a series of distant splashes echoed through the night. Windows rattled, and a deep guttural roar reverberated across the lake. The town awoke to find their worst fears confirmed. The monster had grown bolder, its hunger driving it closer to the surface. Willowbrook Lake was no longer a place of beauty and tranquility, it had become a domain of fear and uncertainty. Jonah Tanner's warning had come true, and the town was forced to confront the ancient terror that had been lurking in its midst. The lake monster, once a whisper in the night, had emerged from the shadows, a force of nature that defied comprehension. As the townspeople grappled with the reality of the lake monster, Jonah Tanner knew that his encounter had changed the course of their lives forever. Tranquility of Willowbrook had been shattered, replaced by a constant vigilance, a shared understanding that the waters held a darkness that could not be ignored. And so, the lake that had once been a source of joy and solace had transformed into a chilling reminder that some secrets were meant to remain buried beneath the surface. 
The monster in the lake was no longer a legend. It was a living nightmare, a testament to the hidden terrors that could lie within the most peaceful of places. As the days turned into weeks, the lake's sinister presence continued to cast a shadow over Willowbrook. The townspeople could not ignore the unease that had settled upon their community, nor the growing sense that they were sharing their home with an ancient, monstrous force. It was a force that defied explanation, a creature from the depths that challenged their understanding of the natural world. The once peaceful lake had become a battleground between the familiar and the unknown, between the tranquil surface and the darkness that lurked below. Willowbrook's residents no longer saw the lake as a place of leisure, but rather as a haunting reminder that danger could emerge from even the most serene of settings. And as the moonlight danced upon the water's surface, casting eerie shadows that seemed to shift with the secrets of the depths, the town of Willowbrook faced a chilling truth. It was no longer alone in the presence of the sinister creature that called the lake its home. Thank you for joining us on this journey through chilling tales and mysterious encounters. If you dare to explore more spine-tingling stories, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Remember, the darkness is always lurking, waiting for the curious and the brave. Until next time, if you dare.